79, go. Four minutes. You may be looking at, you may be looking at one of the most exquisite rings we have done, period. I personally love pieces of jewelry that not only have obviously rare and exotic gemstones in the setting, but when you have these two unique colors where the minute you have it in your possession, the presence of color and the uniqueness in the way they set those gemstones stands out, all eyes on you. Earlier today, we were talking about the type of confidence that you have when you're wearing pieces of jewelry that just make you feel different. This is that piece. And with the rubellite, here's what I'm in shock about. The rubellite gemstone is nearly a two carat. It's a 1.92 carat. 1.92 rubellite, oval. And then the indigolites akin, that outer halo. It's not the usual. They didn't go with an entire indicolite halo. They decided to go every other gemstone is either a diamond or the indicolite. But ladies and gentlemen, look at the size of the diamonds in the halo. Notice how the millimeter size of those diamonds mimic the indicolite. So those are one and a half millimeter diamonds versus the two millimeter indicolite. Then you have your uh, taper baguette diamonds and baguette diamonds in this setting. I mean, this is a next level at the window to lure you in. The one that they send out, all the mailers that lure you into the jewelry stores for those special occasions, this is that piece of jewelry. Also, the fashion magazines, those thick magazines that talk about, you know, some of the most exclusive designers. This is that gemstone piece that would be featured and a beautiful picture would be there. There would be no price listed at all. In fact, they'd probably say there's one in the world that's ever been made and it belongs to the Queen of North Carolina. There it is. That's it. Just the Queen of North Carolina owning this one. Can I tell you a story? Of course. In the gemstone business around the world, there are many interesting personas, right? Interesting people. There's a gentleman in Brazil, his name is Milton Benevitz. <clears throat> and there is a very wealthy gemstone family in a city called Teoflotone, near where our office is. We're about 100 miles apart. And Mr. Milton, many, 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 many years ago, he is a gemstone miner. He owns, there's a city in Brazil called São José do Safira, okay? It is where the Cruzeiro mine is located, the Shia mine is located. It's one of the richest mineral deposits on earth for gemstones. Now, Mr. Milton has a little store. I, I, I've never seen anything like it in the US, but it's a little store. It's like a little grocery store. It's a very tiny town. It has a little grocery store where you can buy everything. You want to buy diapers, he has diapers. You want to buy a broom, he has a broom. You want to buy, I don't know, a, a shirt, he has a shirt. Don't ask me how, but in that little store, you go in, you want to buy something, he has everything. So many people that work in the mines, in the remote mines, they go to Mr. Milton and they open something we call a caderneta. And they don't have the money, but they'll go to Mr. Muto and they'll say, you know, Mr. Muto, I need the groceries for this week. And he'll literally write it down on a little piece of paper. No computer is nothing. He'll write it down on a piece of paper. The guy will sign it. And eventually that gentleman produces something. Something. And he will go to Mr. Muto and Mr. Muto will buy the stones. Now, these are guys that produce one little stone, two little stones. They're not big miners. They're little tiny people that work in the gemstone business. And, and then Mr. Milton will accumulate that for five months, six months, a year, two years. And then he'll come to someone like me and he'll say, Tony, I have something for you. He knows I'm not, you know, I can't, literally our business has grown and we're not going to be buying one stone. We want to buy more. So I prefer to work with Mr. Milton because he's dealing with these guys every day. The reason I'm telling you this is many years ago, 
Mr. Milton started buying a gemstone in an area in São José de Safira. And he bought a parcel of that gemstone. Now, he went to this bigger city called Teoflotoni to this very, very, very wealthy guy called Ke Elawa. And he took that parcel and he thought he was buying Andalusite. I mean, the rough was Andalusite. It looked like Andalusite. He went to Mr. Kelawa and he, he said, you know what, I want $100,000 for this. And Mr. Elawa called his son, Heisen, and uh, they went in, took that parcel, and they came back with $100,000 cash and paid Mr. Milton. No bargain, no negotiation. That was strange. He went back. <clears throat> he took that money, he bought more. He bought a bigger parcel of that gemstone. He went back to Kelawa and he said, look, I have another parcel.